This, this is Raj Sau from South California, Christ Words First Ministries. As you know, I've been uploading a number of videos, especially to highlight how this man, Saul the Pharisee, aka Apostle Paul, deceived the churches. Okay, today, in, uh, in less than I think 20 minutes or so, we will discover how Paul, with, an, with a clinching evidence provided by whom? None other than Apostle Paul himself. Yes, he is indicting himself. You'll realize with a shock, as I was astonished, I've been doing a lot of due diligence on this man. I've been on his trail and tail <laughs> past four or five years. And now I found clinching evidence by none other than Paul himself. See, Bible gives us a pattern. It throws a lot of clue at us, clues rather. And some of these clues are just mind boggling and there but none other than Apostle Paul himself indicting himself including his confession that he is a deceiver okay so in next few minutes guys we will try to breeze through it so it's interesting and it captivates you and catches your attention and captures it so that you may become an instrument for Christ Jesus and share this with other people as well how this man Paul aka Saul the Pharisee indicted himself that he was a deceiver and remember guys after this video not too too much after this uh, too, uh, too many days or months after this video Paul will be known as Paul the deceiver not Apostle Paul but deceiver Paul from now on he will be called Paul the deceiver. If somebody says Paul, it will be quickly followed with the, these two words, the deceiver. Paul the deceiver, okay? Now, the, you, you will soon realize why I am saying so. I am not saying nothing. The scriptures reveal everything, especially words of Paul, when combined with what Jesus was revealing and warning us and issuing caveats. When you put them side by side, you will come to know in no time guys okay so if you find this interesting do share it please with others let us become instruments of a change much needed desperately needed change in the doctrine of the churches let us teach christ's doctrine of saved by love alone we'll come to that later or you can check some of my videos i've uploaded so much on this subjects on these subjects rather so let us quickly go through, dive straight in guys and find out how does Paul indict himself and then confesses that he is a deceiver, leaving nothing to imagination. There be no question of any doubt, not an iota of doubt left. After you uh, hear out Paul through his own words, okay? So let's begin with, now Paul says he was a murderer and a brutal persecutor. So let us jump to where he says brutal persecutor. It's 1 Timothy 1.13. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 13. And I paraphrase. He's saying that he was a, a brutal persecutor. Okay. That, let me quickly read that for you. First. Timothy 1.13, Paul says, Although I, Paul, was formerly a blasphemer, he, was a, he says I was a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man. So he was a persecutor and he was a blasphemer. Okay, we have that evidence. Keep these evidences in mind, guys, as we go along. Acts 8.3, he says, that, uh, rather it, Acts 8.3 says that Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and threw them in prison. Now this is Acts 8.3. So we have 1 Timothy 1.13 where he's a brutal persecutor and a blasphemer. And here in 8.3 Acts, Acts 8.3 he says, it says uh, Saul began to destroy the church. Okay. And uh, went home to house to house and dragged people out and threw them in jail. He was a brutal persecutor. Okay. Now, Paul being a Pharisee, 
Paul was a Pharisee by his own admission. He says, I am a Pharisee. I'll give you the verse. Acts 23, 6. Okay. Paul being a Pharisee was collectively responsible with other Pharisees in the, in the plotting and the brutal murder slash assassination of Jesus Christ. Okay. Remember this guys, you may not be knowing this or may not have paid heed or attention that Saul the Pharisee aka Apostle Paul was collectively involved in the plotting, the murder, uh, trapping of uh, plotting. Let me read out that verse. When Paul perceived that one of the, uh, beg your pardon, this is uh, Matthew 12 verse 14, okay. Then the Pharisees went out and plotted against Jesus that how they may destroy him. This is in Matthew 12, 14, which reveals that the Pharisees plotted against Jesus, as I am telling you, and they are the ones who carried out the brutal assassination of Jesus Christ. These Pharisees were the main culprits. They were the ones who plotted and got Jesus uh, crucified finally. Assassination slash brutal murder. And uh, we just read that what is Paul? He says, I'm a Pharisee. Who, who is then Paul? Part of the gang of Pharisees. He's not the only one. But collectively with other Pharisees, he was involved in the plotting, trapping, and finally the brutal assassination of Christ Jesus on the cross. This man was. So the, the verses again is, he's a Pharisee, Acts 23, 6. Matthew 12, 14 says the Pharisees were involved in the plotting. You must be knowing, but just I'm highlighting how this man is saying I'm a Pharisee and uh, Matthew 12, 14 reveals that these Pharisees were involved in the plotting and murder of Jesus. Next, le uh, let's go quickly to the next one. Paul murdered many new Christians for believing in Christ and he scared many others from coming to Christ, thus robbing many of their lives itself and many others of their potential salvation in Jesus Christ. By preventing new Christians or rather those who loved Jesus wanted to become Christians due to the brutal persecution of Paul they got scared. because He was brutally persecuting the churches. Now I will uh, read out where it is written and again Paul is indicting himself. So not only he uh, stopped many people from coming to Christ but br brutally persecuted those who had already become. So he robbed people, many people of their potential salvation by scaring them. Those people were scared and they ran away because they didn't want to get uh, killed or murdered or uh, uh, brutalized by this man and bunch of other Pharisees, Jews. So they didn't want because of their fear. And who's responsible? Paul in many ways. Not just Paul, others, but Paul especially because he was one of the most belligerent, aggressive Pharisees who was, uh, who was carrying out the persecutions. So, he stopped many from coming to Christ. They lost their salvation because they couldn't come to Christ fearing Paul's brutal persecution. Okay, But here is what he says in Acts 22, 4. I will read out, friends. Paul says, I persecuted Church of Christ to death. He murdered the people. Binding and delivering into prisons both men and women. He is now confessing that he killed many. Because he says, I persecuted the church of Christ, many people, to death. What does that mean? He killed many people, caused their death. He's a murderer. That's what, of whom? New Christians. They were very poor people. Already suffering under the Roman you know, uh, brutal rule. And now this man comes and brutalizes them. You do the calculation, the math. This man is a murderer and he not only killed new Christians, but robbed many of their potential salvation by stopping people from coming to Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, let's go further. This gets more and more macabre and scary thinking what all he did and became an apostle, okay? 
Paul was under seven curses also. Paul was under seven curses and woes of Christ, Jesus. And that is recorded for us in the book of Matthew 23 verses 13 to 39. Check that out. Matthew 23, 13, 39. Jesus had cursed. See, Jesus knew this uh, this fake apostle is coming. He knew the story before it started. He knew from Genesis to Revelation. Therefore, he knew all the uh, uh, re the deception to come through Paul. So he was telling us, he was throwing clues. Now you will understand why he was throwing these clues, including why did he put uh, Paul under curse with other Pharisees. He was also under the seven curses of Christ Jesus, one of them was a curse of condemnation. Where does it say Matthew 23, 33? Paul was one of them under the condemnation of Christ. And then he goes around and appoints uh, the same man he had condemned along with other bunch of Pharisees who he called vipers, <laughs> poisonous snakes in, in, uh, in that Matthew 23 uh, checkout. Guys, 13 to 39, okay? And Matt, Matthew 23, 33, he condemns them. Con condemnation done cannot be changed. Okay, next one. Number five. Paul pa uh, took part in the murder of Stephen. Or rather, Stephen, the godly man, Stephen. Stephen, or Stephen, we in India pronounce it as Stephen. He was done to death by Paul and a bunch of other Pharisees and brutal Jewish people who were against the Church of Christ, okay? Let us read where it is. I'll read, it's in uh, Acts 20 to 20. And when the blood of, he's telling the church, and when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I, Paul, also was standing by consent, consenting to his death and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. He was a co-murderer of the angelic, of the man of God, the godly Stephen, or Stephen, the martyr of Christian faith and the hero. This man was one of the co-murderers. Who says this? Paul. Where does it say? Acts 22, verse 20. Okay. Next, guys, we will go further. Paul committed the king. Mount Everest of all sins. Where did, where did he do that? By blaspheming God and the Holy Spirit, for which there is no forgiveness, wants Jesus Christ in Matthew 12, 31. Let me read out what Jesus says about this. You should please try to read these verses to understand why Paul could never have been chosen one of Jesus. He would have never condemned and said these words. Now Jesus is saying this in Matthew well, 31. What does Jesus say? Therefore, I, Jesus, say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven, guys, or people. But the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, okay? This is Jesus is issuing a final statement. It cannot be forgiven. This blasphemy, this sin cannot be. Now, what it Paul say, do, let us hear in First Timothy, didn't he say that he's a blasphemer? Compare these two verses, Matthew 12, 31, First Timothy 1, 13, what does he say? Although I was formerly a, formerly a blasphemer, he's talking pre-conversion days, he was a blasphemer. So, Jesus went back, it seems on his word, that the blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven, and he forgave. Do you think he went back on his word? I don't think so. I uh, leave it to you what you make out of this. This is Jesus speaking. His words cannot be changed, friends. He has condemned the ones who blaspheme the Spirit. They stand condemned. That's it. It's simple as that. Why go to here and this other words in here? It is of Jesus the boss. Hmm? But as if this is not bad enough for Paul, he exceeded this also. Where? In Acts 26, 11. How? By forcing other others like new Christians to blaspheme as well. Did you know guys, this man not only blasphemed God in the spirit, 
but he met others also the new christians to brut when he was brutally persecuting to scare them and others from coming to christ he made them because his hatred for god was so intense that or rather jesus christ that he made them blaspheme god how how did he do that let's read guys it's acts 26 verse 11 that is a clinching evidence that this man not only blasphemed himself but compelled others to blaspheme as well here i, I read acts 26 11 and i paul punished them the new christians often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme and being exceedingly enraged against them i persecuted them even to foreign cities he <laughs> as if they tried the poor people tried to flee and then he chased them to foreign cities as well he was such a uh, zealous and brutal persecutor but that's not the only thing learning words here are i'll read out and i paul punish them often in every synagogue and compel them to blaspheme so not only did he blaspheme the holy spirit himself but he also made other people to blaspheme do the commit, commit the capital sin of unforgiven and, and the unforgivable sin of blaspheming the spirit now do you think guys he can be saved forget made an apostle it's a double whammy on himself he blasphemed and made others blaspheme so i leave it to you i do not think this is the guy of jesus mm -hmm. he is the one against jesus now as if this is not bad enough all this blasphemies murders plotting of murder of jesus carrying it out with other pharisees his brutal assassination of jesus christ and then similarly that of the heroic and uh, the faithful and the loving godly man stephen slash stephen as if that's not bad enough and then he blasphemes the spirit and compels others also to blaspheme the spirit now look what he's saying about his own self guys pay a lot of attention here in second corinthians 12 verse 16 second corinthians 12 verse 16 paul is making a shocking confession slash submission about his own self lest you guys think that what am i saying all these things look at this look at this what he's saying to about his own self he's saying this to the church of corinth church of christ be that as it may i did not burden you nevertheless the crafty fellow i paul am i took you in by deceit is telling the churches the church crafty fellow that i paul am i took you in by deception second corinthians 12 verse 16 confession slash submission of apostle paul aka the, aka the brutal murdering pharisee the blasphemer of the spirit made not only blasphemed himself but made others compelled is the word in the scripture others to blaspheme here he is making a confession now same man involved in the brutal assassination of jesus christ also this do you realize the impact the consequence of all this friends it is mind boggling but i want to wrap this up so i'll take this forward i'll leave it to your imagination to your uh, consideration of these verses an examination scrutinize them study them i'll be meant i'll be putting them in the description section as well and i would like you to participate by saying something like they say here if you see see something say something as the least you can do guys right for the lord jesus look what how much am i working hard am i i'm just like one of you guys how am i different if i was it's just the passion the love for christ that i want justice for my lord who was done to death by whom the pharisees 
who was deceived by this man who entered and just took over the church of Christ. Okay, everywhere it's Paul, Paul, Paul. Where is Jesus' doctrine? Jesus' doctrine was saved by grace alone, not saved by grace alone, but by love alone, by the acts of loving kindness. Where is it? Matthew 25, 31, 46. Check out my plethora of tons of videos I put on the subject. Please check out. This man is the Antichrist, Paul. Uh, there's a video with clenching evidence like detail. This is just a 20-25 minute video, but that's like an hour if you have time. Check out these verses there. Why is this man the Antichrist? Why is he from the devil? And not from Christ, this Paul. There is a bunch of more uh, evidences I've gathered through hard work, diligent due diligence and research. Spanning years. It's not a uh, flash in the pan that I'm placing all this on the table before you. I've done a lot of painstaking hard work. Very laborious. Deep, late in the night, burning the midnight oil and beyond to gather his evidences. Now you read from his own mouth, he's confessing, look at what the things he's saying, all indicting him, which jury, tell me guys, which jury in this world will set this man not guilty? You present this case to any jury and they will say this man is guilty. Yeah? He's not from the Lord Jesus, he's the deceiver. That's why I'm saying from now on he'll be called Paul the deceiver. He will not be called Apostle Paul, but Paul the deceiver. My hard work will pay dividends, guys. I have the blessings of the Lord. It's His Spirit, which is, the Holy Spirit is egging me on. It goads me on. It takes me to the verses, but I have to study the Bible. He will take me to the right verses. This is all I gathered is because of Lord Jesus. Somebody had to, you know, uh, expose this with this concrete clinching evidence as I say and the Lord says. Alright? So next is also about how this man crucified uh, Father God's eternal law. The law is eternal. It, as if this, these are not enough evidences. The, his doctrine also failed on the law last day. But before I go to that, he kept on talking about you are not under law but under grace. He's the man who introduced the topic of grace. I mean the concept of saved by grace. Did you know friends? Jesus, the son of God, the savior of mankind, never ever uttered the word grace in his entire ministry before crucifixion, after crucifixion. And like he came back after resurrection, even then on and in Revelation. Future times, it doesn't even mention the word grace. Does it shock you, astonish you? And like you and I was also pounded by the churches, my church also, a non-denominational -denom church. Very uh, Christian, but they were deceived. And they taught us, you're not by the same deception. It's not saved by uh, works, but saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, the, the soul of ID doctrine. Doctrine of devil. Why? When Jesus did not teach grace, why are you teaching us? Did he forget or what? Did he forget the centerpiece as taught today? Did he forget the centerpiece of Christian salvation, grace? Never taught, guys. Okay. He, and neither can the eternal, perennial law of God die. Remember that. It's not dead. That's the greatest blasphemy. Jesus says in Matthew 5, 17, 18, the, and I paraphrased for the sake of time, saving time, Matthew 5, 17, 18, he says, do not think I've come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And then he issues a stark warning in Matthew 5, 18. What does he say? And I paraphrase, the entire universe can crash, burn and disappear. But not the least bit of God of law can ever, ever go. It is eternal. It's perennial, guys. It cannot go. Who says that? In Psalms 119, check out the whole Psalms lifts up God's law. Eternal. It's perennial. It's magnificent. Ma uh, Psalms 19 verse 7, check it out. It's called, it's perfect, the law of God. Then again, 
Psalms 19, 9 to 11, it's perennial, like eternal, it's just and it's holy. So he crucified this in Colossians 2.14. Colossians 2.14, Paul says, the law was crucified on the cross of Jesus, where he was a party to crucify Jesus. Now he's crucifying the law, the eternal law of God. Even you must be not knowing. Ask yourself, when the Lord Jesus says, nobody can touch the... Do you know even Jesus cannot touch the law of God? Nobody can. But he taught us how to fulfill it. So obedience required who? Jesus. Read today. Take this as homework. Matthew 22, 37, 40. Matthew 7, 12. Two verses I give you where he says something which will help you obey the entire law. You would mean you and me. And the teachings of the prophets both involve one word, love. When you love God with all your heart, might and soul and love the fellow human being, you obey the entire law and the teachings of the prophet. And that is exactly the metric he used on the last day when he judged people, condemned some and saved some people based on one condition, like one criteria and that was acts, works of loving kindness. And thereby he rejected completely the doctrine of Paul taught by millions of churches across the world. You have been saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. That doctrine is from Paul, justified by faith alone. You must have heard that a million times like me. That doctrine came crashing down on its face. And who gave, who told us that? Jesus. Where does he say that? Matthew 25, 31 to 46. So even the doctrine is, was fake because it was rejected by Christ on the last day. And Jesus knew because of the deception, he gave us that vision of judgment day. Check that out guys. Matthew 25, 31 to 46. With that, I come to the end of this video. Please share it with as many people as you can, including your teachers, pastors and shepherds, Bible study leaders and ask them respectfully that here is a clinching evidence guys and how should we accept this man as the apostle of Lord Jesus. This man is not an apostle, he is Paul the deceiver. <laughs> From now on, his name will be Paul the Deceiver. Not Paul the Apostle, but Paul the Deceiver. Thank you guys for uh, joining in. And God bless you. And I pray blessings on your family. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Bye-bye.